today we're going to be doing a classic drink recipe for a beautiful summer coffee drink. It's the Cafe Shikarato, shaken coffee. Really a very simple drink, a few key tweaks, it can be absolutely fantastic. Not only are we going to do a classic version today, but a couple of other twists to give you some ideas of how you maybe can play with it to create something a little bit more fun, something that you'll really, really, really enjoy. Now, historically, the Cafe Shikarato had been in and out of fashion. Some people are true believers. Tim Wendelbow has served it in his cafe in Oslo for a really long time. I know the Coffee Collective served it in their cafes for quite a while, though they don't anymore. It's one that's maybe forgotten a little bit by the wider coffee industry, and I don't think it should be. I think it's really, really good, not just because it's actually really, really simple. So the idea is, is this. This is the classic drink. You take it in an espresso or two, shake it over ice with some sugar in some sort, strain it, serve it in a chilled glass, deliciousness, right? Super simple, super easy. In the shaking, you give it a nice kind of thick foamy head and it's really nice to drink. If you nail the sweetness, once it's chilled, it's really balanced, really enjoyable, really intense. Just a great hot summer day, start the day off right kind of drink. So we'll start with this classic version of the recipe. And if you go online, you'll see a few different things and a few different techniques and that kind of stuff. I'll, I'll tell you what's really worked for me. Firstly, you'll see some people say you need to use sugar, undissolved sugar in the drink to get a better head of foam. That I have not found to be true. In fact, I would recommend using some sort of syrup one, because it's practical, and two, because it will all 100% dissolve. In some of my testing, the sugar didn't always completely dissolve, which meant a varying sweetness in the finished drink, and that's not okay. Today, I'm gonna be using a one-to-one -one syrup, so it's equal parts sugar and water to make the syrup. You can make that in a blender, you don't necessarily need to heat the water. Uh, it doesn't last as long as a two-to-one syrup, but it's really easy to be accurate with it. You're not accidentally gonna slightly overdose and make the drink a little bit too sweet. We are gonna weigh everything, don't worry, that's how it's gonna go. But it just gives you that extra layer of accuracy, so I, I kinda like it in this situation. So let's start building the drink. We're gonna use shaker tins today. If you're using a sort of smaller cocktail shaker, there's a little twist to the technique, just to stop bad things happening. But if you've got a shaker set like this, you'll be totally fine. So into here, I'm gonna add 10 grams of my one-to-one -one syrup. So that'll be about five grams of sugar, essentially, in the drink. To that, I'm gonna add two drops, which is about 0 0.1, 0 0.15 grams of saline solution. It's in 20 to 80 salt to water. Water. I've talked a lot in the past about using salt in coffee drinks. Uh, I think especially when you're chilling coffee down, it can just take the edge off the bitterness. You don't want to taste salt, right? You just want to have a little bit of saline, just sweeten things up, round things up a little bit more. So now I'm going to pull my shot. And I did test letting the shot cool down first before putting it in to see if that reduced dilution made the whole thing more delicious. Turns out it didn't really make much difference at all, so don't worry about doing that. So while it's pulling, I will get my ice. Don't forget you need enough ice to chill the drink down, but also have enough cubes left unmelted that during the shaking, they're gonna do a lot of aeration, right? You're gonna shake to chill and shake to create foam. So make sure you shake for long enough when the time comes. The one twist is that if you're using a small shaker, once your coffee's in, swirl it around a little bit before you put the lid on. Otherwise, when you start to shake, a buildup of pressure can cause the lid to pop off slightly and that makes a terrible mess. Shout out to Klaus from the Coffee Collective for that little tip. But with a large set of shakers like this, I don't generally have any issues. Let's go. Obviously a nice cold glass. And they have a classic Cafe Shikarato. How is it? Nicely chilled. Tons of coffee flavor, not too sweet. That's really important to me. I don't want too much sweetness. Really nice and balanced, chilled, tons of intensity of flavor, nice texture. That little foamy head is lovely. This, on a bright sunny morning, Perfect. Your preferences may vary. I would be tempted to double strain this, to use a sort of finer mesh sieve as well, just to catch any ice chips if you don't like those. If you don't really care about it, you're fine. But yeah, this might be one to double strain if you're a little fussy about texture. Now, I was thinking about this drink and thinking about ways you could twist it or mix it up or, or play with it a little bit to you know, enhance a particular coffee that you might be using. So the next recipe is one I hope is inspiring for you to go and play with something, a certain coffee that you love uh, and make a little shaker out of that. Here's the plan. Firstly, we're gonna tweak the syrup. Here, I've made an Earl Grey syrup. It's still a one-to-one -one syrup uh, and it's just been infused with really good quality Earl Grey tea. It's aromatic. It's got that lovely bergamot tea quality, very delicious. In addition, we're gonna also use some orange Angostura. We are going to be very, very sparing with this, barely a dash, I'll give you the weights in a second, but it adds again some really lovely aromatics and complexity to the drink. As for the coffee, I'm gonna use a coffee from Rwanda. 
uh, you could use a coffee from Ethiopia. A washed coffee from there would work really super well. This has just got a little bit more fruit, a little bit more texture, uh, and I think it'll be lovely. Now, I'm going to pull it in a way that's slightly updosed, pulled very slightly short, because I'm not worried about acidity. I'm going to balance the acidity out with my syrup, so I want as much kind of fruity punch from the espresso as possible. I'm not going to make a bad espresso, but I'm going to make one that's just very slightly unbalanced, because I can correct that in how I put the drink together. Earl Grey syrup. I'm going to use 12 grams this time, because as I said, we're going to use a bit more sweetness to counteract a slightly more acidic espresso, plus I want as much Earl Grey flavour as possible in that drink. I want it to have some nice aromatics of that bergamot coming through. 0.2 grams of Angostura orange. This is for a single drink. A little goes a long way. And of course, our two drops, 0.1-ish grams of saline. Now we'll pull our shot, ice in, give it a shake, and make something pretty tasty. That smells very pretty. A little of the Angostura orange, a little bit of the Earl Grey. That is lovely. That kind of plays into the complexity of the coffee very nicely. It's that little bit sweeter, not gonna lie, it's that little bit sweeter, but it's nice, it's really good. This is a kind of little afternoon pick-me-up. It's, it's just a lovely set outside, being happy to be in the sunshine kind of drink. And the fruit qualities of the coffee marry really nicely with the tea syrup, with the Angostura. That is a great drink. I would recommend that, actually, if you've got a suitable coffee. It doesn't have to be something like a washed Ethiopian, but something fruit forward, nice and sweet. You might want to bring the sweetness back a touch, that's your call. I really like it where it is. You could garnish this if you wanted to. I wouldn't. I would just let the foam be the garnish on top. It's interesting, unusual, different to most coffee drinks, uh, and just makes the whole thing just a real pleasure to drink from a textural perspective. Really super enjoyable. All of the recipes for today are linked down below. I put them on my website where I keep all my recipes, uh, and you can go and check that out. It's a website that I built with Squarespace, who are this video's sponsor. Time for a little ad from them. From websites to online stores to marketing tools, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that lets you build beautiful websites for you or your business. And there are a host of different reasons to build a website. Maybe you've got a project that you want to share with the world that you've been working on. Maybe it's a portfolio. Maybe it's your writing. Maybe it's your cafe. Often we want to create a website, but it feels difficult. But with Squarespace, it's easy. Start with one of their templates and begin to fill it with your words and your images, and it'll soon feel like you online. You can hit publish and get on with focusing on other things and not worry about maintaining and fussing over a website. But don't take my word for it. Use the link below, sign up for a free trial. Have an idea? Build something. And when you're ready to launch, use code James Hoffman for 10% off any website or domain. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So drink three, version three. Initially, I just wanted to have some fun with some more kind of modernist kind of approaches to this thing, but actually it ended up being a project about practical drink builds. In talking to Klaus at the Coffee Collective, he said they'd stopped serving it because it was just frustrating from a service point of view in a busy coffee bar to stop, you know, put it all together, shake it up, strain it out, do all this kind of stuff. It's just not how coffee bars are built. So I began to think about two different things. One, could you sort of play with the texture of the foam on the drink a little bit? And two, was there a kind of more practical approach for, uh, you know, a coffee bar service? And I began to think about using one of these. It's a cream whipper. And we can use nitrous for this, uh, and that can be a little bit like nitro cold brew. You know, you can get a nice head that way. And I thought maybe we can tweak the texture slightly, and I'll talk about that in a second. But if I filled this with espresso, with my kind of shakerato mix, and then I filled it with nitrous and then discharged it and, and repressurized it again, I'd have a very low oxygen environment in here, which would slow the oxidation of the coffee, and it should hold for longer. In fact, what's in here is three hours old, and having tasted it just now, it tastes pretty much as good as it did when we first made it. So for this, you're gonna need to scale up. Uh, and in this recipe, this was five double espressos, and everything else was just 5 x right? So it's 50 grams of syrup, about a little bit under a gram of saline. You know, that's kind of what we're aiming to do. Now, to tweak the texture, I used xanthan gum, right? There's loads of different things you can use to thicken liquids. Uh, you could use some gelling agents, but xanthan is easy, available, uh, it's cheap, it's, you know, it's not a, a freaky kind of thing that, you know, makes people uncomfortable. It, it's naturally derived. It's useful. The tricky bit with xanthan is the percentages you want to use, right? Of the finished drink, you're looking at 0.05% by weight of that drink being xanthan. And if your drink weighs 50 grams, well, that's not very much xanthan at all. 
right? That's, that's a fraction of a gram. How do you do that? So what we did is we scaled it into the syrup mix. So to make a simple syrup of, of equal parts, water and sugar, we added the xanthan in there to thicken the syrup very slightly. But then once you scaled that down, once you diluted it into the drink, you got the appropriate percentage by weight. Don't do what I did and get the decimal point wrong and add 10 times more than you need. That was a very unpleasant experience. Now you could probably go a little bit lower again if you wanted to, if you didn't love the texture, it'll change the way that the foam uh, stabilizes and sort of holds in the drink. But this way, I think it's, it's really quite nice. One other important thing is getting the level of nitrous in here right. Now, the easiest way to control for this is actually just to weigh this after you charge it. A typical canister weighs, in my experience, about 7.6 grams in terms of the amount of gas it adds to this. The first one you load in, you're gonna discharge completely because that will get rid of almost all the oxygen in here, which will really slow oxidation. You're gonna add your second one, and then I would recommend somewhere between three and four grams be retained. It's confusing and it's a bit frustrating. You'll need to play around with it a little bit. If you're making a larger batch, you can retain more nitrous, and then it's obviously relevant to the size of this thing overall as well. But play, tweak, record what you're doing, and then it's really easy to replicate it from that point on. This has been kept in an ice bath up until now. It still should be nice and cold. Let me get a cold glass and get a drink going. Now remember, this is a pressurized vessel. Don't open it all the way straight away. It's got a bit of force to it. Give it a little shake and then just be gentle. Now you can feel a little fuller because this actually has a bit more gas in it. So the serve size isn't actually as big as a normal traditional shakerato. This is a lot of foam and that will stay as foam for a bit longer. This gives it a very light, fluffy, enjoyable texture. You can see it very slowly starting to settle. Now this is kind of nice in that, you know, it's gonna be foam a little bit longer. Again, with your coffee, your recipe, feel free to tweak the xanthan level, but it's definitely a fun aspect of this. That texture is just very lovely. It's kind of creamy. Obviously it's dairy free, but it has that kind of rich, creamy mouthfeel. Really super enjoyable. This foam will last longer than a traditional shakerato, but it won't last forever. Uh, but, you know, get it to the customer, get it in your face as quickly as you can. Nice and cold, nicely balanced, really a lot like the first drink that we made, just with a little textural lift that I think is really good. It doesn't taste like it was made over three hours ago. So, you know, if I was doing this in a cafe or doing it for a group of friends, this is a really useful way to do it if you've got a cream whipper lying around. Oh, and there's one more point. This can be made with really good decaf and you can have a superb experience as a nice hot summer evening kind of after dinner drink. Decaf can be good and would work really well in a drink like this. I hope you'll try it. I hope you'll experiment and I hope you'll tell me what you thought down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. What's your preferred coffee for a shakerato? Have you tried it before at home or in a cafe? Let me know down in the comments below, but for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.